Hey YouTube, so I have been working on restoring my foreskin for about nine months and uh, I just wanted to give you a little update on how it's going. So as you saw with the previous video, um, I made the distinction between two different types of circumcisions. Uh, one that can drastically reduce the pleasure for a guy because his head, even when he is sleeping, is poking out and getting dry versus a regular uh, guy's circumcision here where there is more skin for the, the shaft to move around and then there is some coverage uh, while sleeping so that the head doesn't become dry. Um, and I learned in, in looking through many videos of, uh, of, of foreskin restoration online that I am the tie cut guy, which explains my extreme sexual difficulty that I've had all my life. So, with that being said, um, I think that I actually, this tight cut guy is actually a CI negative 2. <laughs> and he is going to take a lot longer to um, get sensitivity gains, and that has kind of been the case for me. Where I, my, my line was about, um, about a third above my shaft, and, and maybe if it was about halfway, then I would have a little bit extra skin to have this coverage but I don't yet, and so I'm not seeing a lot of benefits just yet. However, um, because I had so little skin, two things have happened. My erection size is about half an inch larger, at, at least, than it used to be, and I know this because um, I've been having sex with the same person for five months now. We're in a pretty stable relationship, and when I first met her, I wasn't able to like really hit her at the end of her, and now I can not only hit the end of her inside, and but I can also kind of like swirl around it, and there's like extra head getting in there. So like my insertable length is uh, a bit longer, um, and that makes sex a lot more enjoyable for both of us. Um, and then another thing happened is that my flaccid size went from about one inch to about three, two to three inches or so because of the extra skin that allows the, the penis's innards to kind of kind of go out and hang. So I used to have a real um, self-consciousness about um, being seen in a urine, urinary stall in a bathroom um, and I would tend to use the, <laughs> the, the toilet with the door and everything, uh, because I was self-conscious about being made fun of, uh, for having a small dick. Um, and I don't actually have a small dick, it turns out. It, ha it turns out that I have a completely regular, maybe a little bit more larger than average penis, but there was not enough skin to allow it to expand to its full size. Um, and the and the flaccid situation was even worse. So it's nice that um, you know, even though I don't have much in the way of sensitivity gains just yet, uh, I, uh, I do have you know uh, more to satisfy somebody else right now, and I am not conscious about myself about using urinals. So you know, that's a plus. Uh, I know that um, I am just beginning to see. A little bit of coverage over the head now now that I've gone from maybe like right here to like almost half I am starting to see when I wake up in the morning and I look at my dick I have a little tiny bit of coverage so I know that now I'm maybe at CI 1 or 2 or something like that and and I, everything's um, everything's gonna be a lot better from here on out now that I've grown I've moved my scar line upwards essentially um, I know that the sensitivity will will probably be increasing in the next six months and I am dedicated to do this for five years if I need to, if I need to have a regular male body. Um, and yeah, I know that when when the circumcision is performed, you lose the, the frenulum, uh, at, well part of it if not all, you lose the ridge band and a bunch of other uh, nerves that make sex better. but. Guys who have went from where I'm at, which is an extremely tight cut, to um, to fully um, covered, um, you call it a CI-10, they report that they have, you know, dramatically, dramatically, dramatically better sensitivity. And there's even guys who got uh, a foreskin uh, removal uh, when they were in their teens, and they noticed their sexual... Um, sensitivity went way down to almost nothing and then they started restoring 
and they, they, they say that anywhere from 70 to 80% of what they started with, they got back. So that tells us that, you know, uh, the guys who are really tight like me, tightly cut like me, they have a lot of room for improvement. And so uh, my end goal is to be able to have an orgasm from sex and not have to do other activities to get there. Um, and even still doing other activities is very hard because I, I have so little sensitivity in my penis that I can barely have an orgasm, uh, even if I try. So, um, yeah, I, for now, I am doing okay in the relationship that I'm in. Luckily, I learned enough about what's messed up with my body that I can explain this to somebody else and have them understand it. Um, when I first started dating after my divorce early this year, I didn't really know that that was going on with my body. I was with someone who mostly liked oral sex, so I, you know, never really uh, used my penis too much. And so I was able to kind of get around uh, all of the issues that I have, but the next person I dated really liked being penetrated and noticed that I didn't have the same reaction she did, and then she lost sexual interest in me and questioned whether or not I was gay or whether I was attracted to her and that caused her deep insecurity and that's where I got started on this when she told me that I was like oh I can see that I, that makes sense and in fact I think that's happened in my relationships before my marriage when I was younger where it's like why isn't this guy enjoying it with me I'm like oh shit nobody told me this like like it hurt like a motherfucker to hear that from that girl but it was like the most valuable feedback so I thought you know, the next person I date, I probably needed to tell them about what's going on with me and that, like, it's hopefully you're okay with this kind of sexual relationship where I can't have an orgasm from sleeping with you. And I started to, like, disclose that. And um, I, I didn't really fully understand it until maybe six months ago when I really understood how my penis worked versus how it should work. And with my most recent girlfriend that <clears throat> I'm probably in a pretty long-term relationship with her, I think that's going to end up happening. Before we even had sex, I told her everything. I was like, this is, uh, sex is going to be exciting at first. Uh, it always is, you know, it's just hormones. And then after that, I'm generally kind of like a low libido person. I don't like a lot of, uh, you know, I don't like receiving oral because I can't feel anything. Um... I, you probably won't be able to get me off with a hand job. We need to do other things, and that's just how it is with me. So I hope you're okay with that. If it's not, then you know maybe you might want to reconsider being in a relationship with me. We I <laughs> talked about that on like the second or third date, and like it's been good because I was able to just sort of disclose it, and so I kind of uh, got around the whole insecurity type thing that a lot of women experience with me, um, and and we've. Uh, regularly talked about what's going on with me and my body and um, you know I often kind of go like I'm sorry it works this way but I'm really working on it hard and she gets that so she's the kind of girl that likes to be penetrated a lot and so it's just kind of like normally I wouldn't consider being in a relationship with someone like that because I know they're not going to be satisfied by me in the long run because I don't get enjoyment out of that and it's hard to keep an erection when I can't feel anything unless I take Viagra or something which is not what I want to be doing. So we we have made things work pretty well um, just by communicating a lot and just the initial disclosure of everything that's going on in my body has really saved this one. So I think that uh, I may not have my sexual dysfunction, we'll call it, um, interfering with this relationship, and I'm very happy and content, although there is sort of like this fear in the back of my mind that she'll just get tired of like, oh, why can't this guy come in me, you know, so that is, you know, that is something that kind of hangs there, but I'm doing my best to restore my foreskin, not just for my relationship with her, but for me, because I want to have a normal sexuality and not, um, not require other things to be able to get off. So I feel like I'm, I'm headed that way and uh, I might not be seeing a lot of the benefits just yet, but I know that in six months or another nine months, um, I'm probably going to make a video telling you about how awesome that is. <laughs> so uh, if you're thinking about restoring your foreskin, my advice is still yes, absolutely do it. Um, we need to end this practice of mutilating the genitals of male babies, blah, blah, blah. But um, so far, it's, it's going pretty good. 
Um, I just mostly have a bigger dick to show. <laughs> well, it's not really bigger. That's the thing. It's just a skin issue. But um, that is nice uh, and a confidence booster. But um, yeah. So I'm going to stop rambling and we are going to talk later about dicks. But uh, I'm probably going to have a lot of videos about e-bikes and shit on my channel from now on. So <laughs> sorry if you got tired of like watching dick videos. <laughs> All right. Catch you later.